The Villa Poppia is an ancient Roman seaside villa situated between Naples and Sorrento, in southern Italy. It is also referred to as the Villa Oplontis, or more precisely as Villa A by modern archaeologists. The villa itself is a large structure situated in the ancient Roman town of Oplontis, about 10 meters below the modern ground level. Evidence suggests that it was owned by the Emperor Nero, and believed to have been used by his second and rather notorious wife Poppia Sabina, as her main residence when she was not in Rome. House Plan and Construction According to John R. Clarke in the Houses of Rome and Italy, 100 BC AD, 250, Ritual, Space, and Decoration the Villa Poppia is best understood as a model on which many of the more modest city houses of ancient Pompeii and Herculaneum were based. This grandiose maritime villa is characterized by rituals of reception and leisure through both its physical space and its decoration. Like many of the other houses in the area, the villa shows signs of remodeling, probably to repair damage from the earthquake in 62 CE. The oldest part of the house centers round the atrium and dates from the middle of 1st century BCE. During the remodeling, the house was extended to the east with the addition of various reception and service rooms gardens and a large swimming pool. Detailed information about the various phases of construction on the Villa Poppia can be found in Stefano de Caro's chapter in Ancient Roman Villa, gardens published by the Dumbarton Oaks Colloquium on the History of Landscape Architecture, frescoes. Like many of the frescoes that were preserved due to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, those decorating the walls of the Villa Poppia are striking both in form and in color. Many of the frescoes are in the second style of ancient Roman painting, dating to California. 9025 BCE is classified in 1899 by August Mao. Details include feigned architectural features such as trompe windows, doors, and painted columns. Frescoes in the Calderium depicting Hercules in the Garden of the Hesperides are painted in the third style, dating to California, 25 BCE to 40 CE according to Mao. Attention to realistic perspective is abandoned in favor of flatness and elongated architectural forms which form a kind of shrine around a central scene, which is often mythological. Immediately to the west of the triclinium is a large OECUs, which was the main living room of a Roman house. Like the Calderium frescoes, the room is also painted in the second style. The east wall includes some wonderful details such as a theatre mask and peacock. Much attention has been paid to the allusions to stage painting in the Villa Poppia frescoes, particularly those in Room 23, Rediscovery and Excavation History. The Villa of Poppia was first discovered in the 18th century during the construction of the Sarno Canal which cut through the central hall of the villa. Between 1839 and 1840 explorations of the site were undertaken by Bourbon excavators who removed several paintings from the villa. The excavators used a tunneling technique that was also employed at Herculaneum and uncovered part of the peristyle and garden area. Excavations continued again from 1964 until the mid-1980s, at which point the site was excavated to its current level. It was during this final round of excavations that the massive swimming pool, measuring 60 by 17 meters, was unearthed. The villa's southernmost portions have been left unexcavated because of the physical limitations of the complex, which has been compromised by its position beneath the modern city of Turin Unziata and the construction of the Sarno Canal. Gardens Historian and archaeologist Wilhelmina Femster Jashemsky began excavations on the gardens at the Villa Poppia in 1974, and by 1993, 13 gardens had been discovered. Among these was a peristyle garden in the original portion of the villa. There, Jashemsky and her team found evidence of a large shade tree next to a fountain. They also found a sundial, and the remains of a rake, a hoe, and a hook. Another garden in the grounds, this one enclosed, featured wall paintings of plants and birds. 
and evidence of fruit trees growing in the garden's corners. Two courtyard gardens also featured wall paintings. A large garden that Jashemsky describes as park-like extends from the back of the villa. There her team discovered cavities that had once housed the roots of large trees, believed by specialists at the Ministero de la Agricultura to be plain trees. Also found were what seemed to be the remains of tree stumps. These were analyzed in the lab, but as the wood had changed to calcium carbonate, the exact species of the trees could not be identified from the remains of the stumps. However, one large branch still retained some of its original cellular structure intact, and examination of this material under a microscope proved that the branch came from an olive tree. Other trees at the Villa Popia were also identified, including lemon and oleander. A carbonized apple found on the site indicates the former presence of apple trees. According to Patrick Bow, modern-day replanting of the villa's gardens was undertaken only after the garden's original plant types and location were known. Nearby villa. Nearby is the so-called Villa of L. Crassius Tertius, partially excavated between 1974 and 1991. In contrast to the sumptuously decorated Villa Poppia, the neighboring villa is a rustic two-story structure with many rooms left unplastered and with tamped earth floors. Some of the rooms seem to have been used for manufacturing, and others were storerooms, while the upper floor contained the living quarters of the house. These circumstances, along with more than 400 amphorae recovered in the excavations, seem to indicate the presence of a small business on the property devoted to the production of wine, oil, and agricultural goods. The discovery of a series of weights seems to confirm this theory. A bronze seal found at the site preserved the name of Lucius Crassius Tertius, apparently its last owner. This villa was not deserted at the time of the eruption. The remains of 54 people were recovered in one of the rooms of the villa, perishing in the surge that hit Oplontus. With the victims were found many of their belongings, including fine jewelry, silverware, and coins in the amount of 10,000 cestuses, the largest sum found in any area of the Vesuvian region. Photo gallery, mosaic floor, kitchen, swimming pool.